yeah hello uh, welcome back to the next module of the pm distilled uh, pmp preparatory program uh, let us take a quick recap of where we are uh, we started with project initiation uh, the inputs for initiation were the were the contract the statement of work the enterprise environmental factors and the organizational process assets an initiation was performed by the project charter a uh, project sponsor and the first thing he did was developing a project charter a project charter contained the business case of the project uh, the constraints of a project the assumptions we made uh, the key stakeholders names contact details uh, the project managers name the project sponsors name their roles and responsibilities so and the high level milestones so all these things are documented into the in in the project uh, charter and the second process under initiation is identifying stakeholders so after the initiation so uh, a pro a during the initiation a project manager is appointed and his roles and responsibilities are defined and the project manager carries the project forward to the planning phase and during the planning phase the first process uh, was develop a project management plan uh, there we spoke about the subsidiary plans and integrated project plan all those things were discussed uh, then it was collect the detailed requirements because so far we were operating through a high level requirements provided by the statement of work now it is time to elaborate these requirements into detailed requirements and once those rec detailed requirements are done uh, then uh, we got into defining the scope and once the scope is defined uh, the next step is decomposing the scope into a work breakdown structure uh, it is a deliverable oriented grouping of project components it organizes and defines the total scope of the project that means there should be one to one mapping between the the scope document to the work breakdown structure otherwise when you deliver the product uh, some of the requirements given by the customer uh, may not be met and it breaks the project into smaller and more manageable pieces that means okay now instead of trying to manage the project as a as a whole you break it into smaller pieces uh, into work packages to be precise and then manage those work packages so that is uh, that is based on divide and rule strategy and it's linked to the project strategy that means when you do a wbs you will know a, along with it a project execution strategy will also evolve so that means while doing the wbs we'll decide what all things we should do in house what all things should be subcontracted outside what all things where and all we need uh, external consultants uh, so along with the wbs a project strategy also evolves and it is based on uh, divide and rule this is very very critical for the project success because most of the projects fail because of improper estimation the, as we discussed earlier the projects fail in the beginning not at the end either we start a project which doesn't have a business case or we get into a project with absolute wrong estimates uh, and then try to recover it through all unethical practices uh, so that will not work so without a WBS uh, an estimate within plus or minus five which is an accurate estimate is impossible uh, so we it is criminal so it is, it is humanly impossible to come out with an accurate estimate without a work breakdown structure and that becomes a professional ethics violation as well uh, while creating the WBS we have the scope statement we have the requirements documentation we have the organizational process assets and the tools and techniques is decomposition and output is a work breakdown structure then we talk about a WBS dictionary as well which we'll discuss later in the upcoming slides and uh, the requirements document along with the finalized WBS becomes the scope baseline uh, and sometimes while doing the WBS uh, maybe the plan may get updated sometimes even the charter may get updated 
because WB is uh, based on the progressive elaboration of the nature. By the time we reach uh, the WB state, uh, we'll have more information about the project. We'll have the, the, the project requirements will be slightly more crisper than what it was at the time of the statement of work. So, so if, there is a, if there is a change, we may have to go back and update uh, the other artifacts. Uh, this is an example of a work breakdown structure where uh, the company website and the planning and design you have to identify a website designer sorry you have to identify a website designer and for that you have to get a request make the request for propo prepare a statement of work and against that make a request for proposal and get the proposal and then sign the contract so if you see this the lowest level in a WBS, we call it as a work package. So here, which is the lowest level? This is, let's say this is level zero, this is level one, this is level two, and level three. So here, if I'm estimating this project, I need not estimate this intermediate level. I need to always estimate the lowest level. Uh, because if I estimate these uh, work packages, and if I roll it up, then automatically I get this. And if I roll these things up, I get this. And if I roll these things up, then I get this. So always one need to estimate only the, the, the work packages, which are at the lowest level. In this case, it is level 0, level 1, level 2, and level 3. Again, uh, one finer point, which we, you will have to notice is that, uh, see, these things are not in any logical sequence. Look at this. Uh, See, I have to. Uh, I have to first of all. I have to do a statement of work before requesting, uh, requ before sending requests uh, for proposals. Uh, but unfortunately, here it is coming later. So uh, that is deliberately just put like that because a WBS doesn't show any sequence of work. It it just gives you the breakup of work. It doesn't give you any sequence of work. It just gives you the breakup of work. That should be very, very clear. And there is no hard and fast rule while doing the WBS because here this could have been like uh, component one, component two, component three, and component four. And for component one, maybe planning and design, development, testing. For component two, planning, uh, planning and design, development, testing. So it could have been like that as well. So it all depends at the at the at the at the discretion and the creativity of of the person who's doing the WBS. And it's a, it's a fantastic tool to explain the scope of work to any relevant stakeholder. Uh, when I was in pre-sales, I still remember, uh, WBS is a, is, a, is a great tool to explain what the project does you know, to any relevant stakeholder, or even to, est even to explain your estimates of the project. A WBS is a great tool. You just project the WBS and say this piece will take this much, this will take this much, this will take this much, and this will take this much. Now you tell me, yeah, what should be done? So that way, it is a, it is a basis for all professional uh, negotiations. It is, it, and it's a, it brings a lot of clarity into the project. Once the WBS is done, uh, that becomes the foundation for uh, the remaining work. Uh, then, based on the WBS, you come out with the cost estimates, cost budgets, resource planning, risk management planning, and activity definition. The lowest level in a WBS is called a work package. We already discussed in the previous diagram. We had level 0, level 1, level 2, and level 3, the lowest level. So, there is a work package. Our activities are components that can be easily assigned to one person or team of people with clear accountability and responsibility. That means when you when you start visualizing work as smaller pieces, uh, then it is easy to estimate. It is easy to uh, write a test case for it and then assign to somebody with accountability. Uh, the work package level is where time estimates, cost estimates, and resource estimates are determined. As a project manager, uh, one one doesn't track a project at the activity level. You stop exercising control at a work package level. So this again, uh, the depiction of work package. The project is here. Uh, maybe requirements, design, coding kind of thing, the smaller pieces. The lowest level is a work package. Let's say level zero, level one, level two, and level three. So lowest level is the work package and the smallest level a PM will manage. 
and whenever you do a WBS, you will be always in a dilemma uh, uh, on till what extent you should decompose uh, the work package. So if you decompose uh, it uh, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the most granular level, the lowest level can become activities, which is an overkill. So, uh, so PMI has given a guideline. So this is a global best practice where when you decompose a work package, when you decompose a project into a WBS, the work packages can be between eight hours chunks of work or it can or it could be anything between eight hours and eighty hours. That means for a very small project, the work package will be around eight hours kind of thing or ten hours or twelve hours. And for a very large project, so it could be seventy hours, eighty hours, ninety hours kind of thing. So or it could be anything in between. The idea is for small projects, the work package should be smaller in size. And for, for large projects, the work package should be larger in size. For a small project, if you come out with a very large work packages, then uh, that is a sure prescription for disaster because it will it'll be very difficult to monitor uh, the track, the progress of the project in that kind of a combination. For smaller project, small work packages. That means if the work package is almost eight hours in eight hours chunk of work, at least in a day's time, you'll see whether it is done or not. But if it is an 80 hour work package in a small project, you'll have to wait for 10 days, that is 10 into 8, 80 hours, uh, to see whether it is done or not. And uh, that, that will deprive you of a lot of recovery time. That means you will come to know about failures uh, 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 to very end, very end in the, uh, very late in the project. So that way it could be, it could be difficult. So 880 rule and the milestones are major accomplishments in a project. They do not have any duration. When all the pertaining activities are completed, a milestone is completed. Uh, for PMP now, achieving the 35 contact hours is a milestone. Or release one is a milestone, release two is a milestone, and release three is a milestone. And if I when I design this course, maybe doing completion of the videos is a milestone, completion of the reference material is a milestone. Uh, completion of the online test is a milestone kind of thing. A WBS dictionary, especially when uh, when we talk about uh, a distributed work, take the case of Burj Khalifa where the project manager uh, of Turner Corporation was sitting in the, in the UK and the work is happening in UAE. Now think of a situation where you have to tell somebody to pay in one particular room what are things I should tell him? I should tell him which room, which wall, what type of paint, what is the room temperature. If the room temperature is X, then you do these steps. If the room temperature is very cold, then you do these steps. How many coats of the paint? And before painting, just see whether the, the plumbing subcontractor has completed his work. And please check whether the carpeting contractor has, has done his work. If carpeting is already done, okay, then you have to do some precautionary measures. Uh, and uh, what should be the standard followed for painting? Oh, all these things I'll have to tell him. Otherwise, he'll go, he'll just go and then paint some wall with some paint and come back. So especially for large construction project where a lot of subcontractors are operating, a WBS dictionary is very, very critical. This may not be that applicable for a small IT projects where six, seven people are sitting in a room uh, and all are graduates and uh, who can be very rational. Uh, then, okay, maybe a WBS dictionary may not be that critical. A code of accounts. Uh, See, typically, uh, if you want to really track the planned versus actual uh, of, uh, uh, of work packages, then each work package can have a coding scheme like work package 1.1, 1.1.2, 1.1.3 .1 kind of thing. We call it as a code of accounts because every work package will have a budget and the actual expenditure will be recorded either in the financial accounting or in the time accounting systems. So if you really want to link between the work package or the project management software system to the financial accounting system or the time accounting system, then we need these linkages. Project code, work package code, and the activity code. So we call it as uh, the, the work package code we call as the code of accounts. Planning component. When sufficient scope related information is not available, 
uh, we operate through a planning component. That means, okay, now we spoke about 8080 rule. Now take a project where a 10 member team is working for six months. Then we are talking about uh, 10 into 20 working days. Uh, that is 200, 206. There is 1,200 work packages approximately. That project will have around 1,200 work packages. And out of this th these 1,200 work packages, some of the work packages may not uh, uh, or packages man we may not have back-to-back -back purchase orders to estimate some of the work packages then what you do we don't have the luxury of postponing the project so in that case we'll make some assumptions and then proceed that means we operate those accounts through a control account which is a provisional account a budgetary account then then we operate till we get that ac accurate thing so that is a control account and the piece of work which is operated through this this provisional accounts or a control account we call it is a planning package so a planning package can be just one work packages it can be a group of work packages or it could be just part of a work package the fundamental definition is that piece of work which is operated through a control account we call it as a planning package and the amount the approximate amount allocated against uh, the provisional amount allocated, we call it as a control account. So thank you very much for uh, attending this module and I hope uh, it was valuable to you because this is one of the most thrilling things for me because I was in pre-sales for uh, a couple of years and the one tool which helped me to estimate projects very, very clearly or very, very accurately was a work breakdown structure. So don't commit anything to anybody without the without defining a work package and estimating at the at the at the without without putting a WBS in place and estimating at the work package level uh, otherwise you will never get it right thank you very much